when we're working on cars and trucks, a lot of times we have to have the vehicle off the ground. And all the tires have to be off the ground. So we use a lift. This uh, nice rotary two-post lift is a very common type of lift found in shops all over the world. It's really not that hard to use. Now, the way you use it can vary a little bit depending on the length and width of the car, and whether it's a unibody vehicle or a full frame vehicle, that's going to change it. A pickup truck is going to change it. Different vehicle heights are going to change it. But today, I'm just going to go over a typical unibody car and how we would go about lifting it. If you're not sure on how to lift your vehicle or the vehicle you're working on, you're going to want to check out with the manufacturer where the lifting points are and how to lift it. That information is generally all available online these days. This is just a basic how-to, not a comprehensive how you put every car on every kind of lift. There's a lot of little differences. But this will give you a, a good basic idea. Before you put a vehicle on the lift, make sure you're within the operating capacity. As we can see, the operating capacity of this lift is 7,000 pounds. So I think with our Cadillac ATS, we're not going to have any trouble there. Now another important thing is the wheel spotting positions. As you can see, there's some different spots here depending on less than 105 inch wheelbase, 105 through 127 inch wheelbase, and larger than 127 inch wheelbase. If you don't know the wheelbase of your vehicle, it's easy to figure out. You get a measuring tape and get a partner and measure from the center of the hub on the rear wheel to the center of the hub on the front wheel. That is your wheelbase. The overall length of the vehicle, nose to tail, is different. The wheelbase is center of the hub to center of the hub. When we drive the vehicle onto the lift, we want to make sure it's centered between the two posts. Not only does it have to be centered, it also needs to be straight. We have a vehicle that's drifting one direction or the other and not centered. It's going to be difficult to lift, and if we can lift it, it may be unstable. And when you're working under a vehicle, well, you don't want it to be unstable. I certainly want to make sure that if I'm underneath something that weighs like 4,000 pounds, I don't want it coming down on it. Now this Cadillac is a very short wheelbase car. It's pretty small. Since it's a short wheelbase vehicle, we want the front tire to be right here on this plate. If it was that medium distance uh, wheelbase that we mentioned, it would go here. If it's that longer wheelbase, more than 127 inches, it's going to go here. Now different lifts may have different specifications, but that's how you do it on this particular lift. This Cadillac ATS is a unibody car, like most cars today, and therefore it has a pinch weld. Now, General Motors made it real handy to show us where the lifting points of this car are. As you can see, there's plastic on this rocker panel, but then there's a spot here that's opened up. That's the lifting point. And there's going to be four of them on this vehicle. So we want to swing our arm of our lift here. This is adjustable, it moves in and out. And I'm going to go ahead and use this, flip that up. All right, and I can readjust everything here and I want to get this lined up with that right? so I got a good spot now you want to make sure you're not going to crimp any brake lines or fuel lines or plastic or anything of that nature so we'll go around and put those on all four corners of the vehicle got my rear pad set up here let's move on over to the other side Okay, looks good. Number four looks pretty good to me. Now it's time to give this thing a lift. Now to raise the lift, we press this button. We're only going to lift the car a few inches off the ground, and we're going to test how good of a job we did getting the car balanced and set up for the lift.
Once we have all four tires off the ground, just a little bit, we're going to test the, our job to make sure we've actually got it on the lift stably. I don't want to test it when it's all the way up in the air, four, five, six feet up there, it could come to crashing down on me. If it's going to fall off the lift, I'd rather it fall off from two inches off the ground or something like that, right? That's a lot better. So, once I've got all four tires off the ground, I'm going to go and I'm going to jug jiggle the car a little bit. Ah, that lift's going to wiggle a little bit, but what you want to do is listen. You want to, you don't want to hear anything. See? Now, if we heard clatter, 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 clunker, 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 that means one or more of our arms is not making contact with the car and our car could fall off the lift. When you don't hear anything when you shake it and it's good and solid, that means that car has got four good points of contact and it's not going anywhere. Once the car is in the air, you want to make sure that all of your jacking points are good and solid. Just a double check before you get under there and start working. If your lift has a lock that you have to set manually, make sure you set that safety lock before you get under the vehicle. Now this lift has an automatic safety lock. The clunking you heard when the lift was going up was the safety lock engaging. If you don't hear that clicking when it's going up, you've got a safety lock problem and that lift is not safe to use. Never work on a lift with an inoperative safety lock. When we work under a vehicle, we want to lift it to a height that's going to be comfortable for our working level. right? So if I'm going to be needing to stand up high to work on something, I'm certainly going to want to lift it all the way. If I'm just going to be taking the tires off and working on the brakes, maybe I want to have it pretty low so I can work at my height. Or uh, maybe I'm going to be sitting in a chair, a shop stool or something like that while I'm working. So there's no reason to lift over the head. The idea of the lift is you can move the work space whatever you need. Now this is one of the worst things if you're tall. For a really tall person, the lift only goes so high. This one's six feet. So if you're more than six feet, you're duck. See, being a mechanic is actually easier if you're short. Because a short person, they can just lower the car to whatever level they're comfortable at. So if you're really a short folk, you know what? Being a mechanic is a pretty good occupation for you. Once we're done working on the vehicle, we want to go ahead and lower it. That's pretty easy as well. You have to release the safety and lower at the same time. You can't try to lower it without releasing the safety. It's not going to work. Never tie back the safety with rope or wire or something to try to cut the job. No. It's always a two-handed job. Working around a lift, working around something heavy, you want to be safe. I know I do, so you should think the same way. So I release the safety. There's a steel cable that runs through, unlocks it on both sides. So I keep my hand on this, holding the lever down, and I push this lever in. And it lowers the vehicle. Make sure that the lift goes all the way down or else you won't be able to move the arm. Once the lift is down, go ahead and move the arms out of the way so you can drive the vehicle off 
to lift. It's just that simple. Be sure to move both arms out of the way. Some lifts, both arms go to the front. This lift go to the back. It's pretty simple. Now our car is ready to drive out and we're ready to hit the road. Have a good day.